Hello! Today we have this 2008 Suzuki Vitara or Grand Vitara 2 litre petrol that is in for its annual service. Now, this will be a fairly regular service where we do uh, engine oil and filter, uh, transmission filter because this uh, has an automatic transmission. It is a couple of years ago since I changed uh, transmission fluid last time, so I will do it now again and cabin air filter uh, this car also of course has a uh, air filter but i replaced that last year uh, together with spark plugs and valve cover gaskets so that's not necessary to do now but uh, where we will start now first is uh, this car has xenon headlamps so i have a new xenon bulb to go in on the passenger side and uh, number plate lights so uh, let's start with that. So I have already removed the old bulb, uh, bulbs, so I will just fit a new one quite easily. Just now, bulbs are in, so let's refit the lenses. This is very easy. You just twist it like that to loosen it and to the right to fasten it. It's the same procedure over there, but yeah, now you have seen very, very simple. I have already removed the xenon bulb because I have to, I had to go uh, out to buy a new bulb and uh, to check that I can get the correct one. I just took out the old one and it's a D2 S bulb that's required on this uh, Grand Vitara of this uh, generation. So uh, I will see if I can place my phone so you can see how I put it all together again. I'm not sure if you can see entirely what I'm doing, but let's give it a try. So we'll get a new bulb. Is. And now, when we fit this, we uh, lift the igniter, or what you call it, and this par par uh, portion here has to face downwards. like that and there we are oh. there just push it in and twist to the right into the right direction now as you can see Try to give it a little more light. The bulb is seated correctly in the headlamp unit. So let's see if it works. Yes, it definitely does. Let's see if we have license plate or number plate working. <laughs> yes, we do. That's good. So then we can ta take the headlight. Cap back in place. There. is the worst recording ever like that in place yeah we're going to do a little uh, polishing up the headlights or the lenses uh, when the service is done because 
they're quite scratchy and cloudy so yeah so let's get on with the oil change and so we'll just jack the car up first so let's remove the like it's consuming a little bit of oil but it has over 300,000 kilometers so on it this car so it wouldn't be strange really if, it, if it's consuming a little bit of oil the car is jacked up in the air and is safely placed on jack stands i have found a tray to uh, drain the oil in so let's scroll underneath and file the oil pan so here we have the soap you can see the drain plug like there and over here i'm not sure if you can see uh, there up there is the oil filter in a slightly awkward position but it's not hopeless to uh, get it off but yeah you have to clean up a bit of oily mess uh, especially uh, around this area because it sort of gets soaked with oil when you take the filter out but yeah let's get the pl sun plug out if i remember correctly this is a 40 no it isn't do i remember so badly i think actually it's a 17. oh i have to get the right one second try oh oh my god yeah that's loose place the tray directly underneath and Oops, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> oh, there we are. So, let's just make that drain in peace and quiet. And, excuse me, this recording is rubbish. Yeah, clearly you can see there and over there. If you see that uh, plastic cover there, uh, next thing is to take that down and access the drain plug to the automatic transmission. Now it has just about stopped dripping. So you can put the drain plug, plug back in again. fairly snug <laughs> there's no need to over tighten it so let's move on to the oil filter so, on to the oil filter you can see the drain plug there on the oil sump and just up here you have the oil filter so now i'll we'll try to find a uh, uh, fit uh, a tool up there to make it a little bit easier to get loose because it is quite tight up there so yeah i'll try to figure something out so finally the oil filter is out there is no chance for me to film that uh getting, getting it loose uh luckily it wasn't too tight which i knew it wouldn't be because i'm the last one who changed it so <laughs> so oh, oh my god oh, excuse me there is the oiled filter so let's find a new one new filter like that so we take 
so now we have to take and smear a little film of oil on the ceiling there you can just take a little bit of old oil like that now let's get it in place so there the new filter is in place still too tight to film why i'm uh, putting it on but yeah i uh, turn it in by hand till it stops and just tighten it fairly snugly not over tighten this either but just tight enough so it won't leak because if you over tighten it uh, it isn't very fun to get it off again next time so yeah now we move on to the transmission now i have uh emptied the old engine oil in an empty oil can so we can take it to uh, a proper place to get it uh, environmentally correctly treated and thrown away so now it's time to get the drip pan down from underneath the transmission and then we start with we have two 10 millimeter bolts here Right away, please. Oh, excuse me. Terrible recording. That's one. And now we have some clips over here. The whole thing comes down. Oh dear. Yeah, so here is the transmission oil pan. It looks very nice and dry indeed. So now I'll find the correct size socket for that one. I believe that is uh, 13 it looks like. 14 millimeter was actually the correct size so here it goes there it's loose i think i'll use my other hand to get it so I have the drain pan ready underneath of course it's very tight I have replaced transmission fluid on this car like three or four times before because it had quite erratic and irregular shifting and so tendencies of um, converter vibration but two flushes in a row actually cured it quite well so now we are, we're just doing this every second year to make sure the transmission can hold as long as possible and it has proven quite successful. Oh dear, oh, messy, messy, messy. Yeah, could be worse. <laughs> Ooh, there. So now we'll just let that drain and measure the amount we have gotten out so we can fill in again the same amount uh, later. Okay, so while the transmission is draining, we can change the cabin filter uh, while we're waiting. So 
it's located uh, behind the glove box here. I've already taken the owner's personal belongings out. Now, what we start to do is uh, and get some light. Oh, somebody's been here and oh, that's broken. It's supposed to be uh, a rod attached to uh, uh, that there. Uh, that seems to be missing, but yeah, anyway, uh, what we start to do is you pull in like that and do the same on the other side like that and just tip it down because these, excuse me, terrible, terrible recording, uh, these taps are just on these ones, so now here you can see we have the cover here we just take oh, <laughs> take off this cover here and we can put it down there and here we have the excuse me uh, this is uh, I've just have to hang up the light so I can concentrate a little bit more whilst recording uh, I'm so sorry. Oh God, this is just chaos. There, hang there. Yeah. And here we have the filter. You can just pull that out. Come on. There we are. Like that. Yeah. This car lives... Uh, on the street where there are quite a lot of trees so it falls quite a bit of debris down on this car but this isn't bad consider it has been in this car for two years so it isn't the worst i've seen definitely so now you can check inside of the housing yeah just take the vacuum cleaner uh, quickly inside of here before i uh, put in a new filter. Yeah, I think we say that's good. Filter. Take it out of its plastic housing. There. And so we have to check here. You can say it says airflow downwards, or that's the uh, direction uh, the air is supposed to go. So that means it has to sit this way. Excuse me. There. Let's slide it in nicely and neatly. Come on. side to side oops filter isn't pinched or anything but what's happening here oh, the filter is 
tightly in place. So we can slide the cover back on again. There, as easy as that. So let's get the glove box back on again. So we let the light disappear. And just locate these tabs into here. There. So you can see there. Same on both sides. And then you just push the glow box in and then it keeps up by itself. There. Just try to push that back on again. There. That's how it's supposed to be. Yeah. And that's the cabin air filter done. So the transmission is done draining. Uh, only th stupid thing I managed to do is the car is not jacked up in the front, which means <laughs> oil has been hasn't just flowed down in the drip pan. It has also found its way onwards onto the cross member. Uh, you can see there. Hmm. And made a huge puddle of oil on the floor. How lovely. Hmm. Yeah, yeah. Could be worse. So let's get the drain plug in. Oops. Like that. Come on. There we are. Threads are just a little bit tight. Like that. Like that. So I'll find some paper and clean up this mess. Didn't exactly expect that to happen, but there you are. At least it isn't a huge amount. It always looks worse than it is, so it won't have anything to say about uh, the amount of fluid I have to put back in the transmission again. So, yeah, now I'll just have to clean up this mess and we'll get up and start filling up some fluids. Of course, you also need to put back on again the cover that goes beneath the transmission. Yep. Same procedure as taking it out. Yeah. Okay, so before I fill up again uh, the transmission fluid, I have to measure the amount of fluid I have drained out of the transmission. I have a uh, can here that I used for that I use for uh, old transmission fluid. I have already some old fluid in it from my own car, so I have put a mark here, so I know where the level was. So I know what to use for reference uh, and it's just about four and a half liters on it now. So I'll see what it ends on when uh, I have emptied the tray there. I've measured, um, uh, measured the amount of transmission fluid I've drained out of the car and it was about three liters. Uh, that's uh, the usual number I've seen every time I've drained and filled up the transmission of this car. You, you typically don't get much out of a transmission just by <coughs> sorry draining it and filling it up again so that's why i do this every second year it's a little bit more often than necessary but yeah i don't think it's a waste uh changing oil a little more often than a little bit too late honestly it is an old car it has done over three hundred thousand miles it, it has some wear and tear on it but it's going strong. It works very good. 
and the lady who owns it likes it very much so it needs a good wash but yeah it is a good working car not at all like new but that's that doesn't necessarily mean something to everyone you know so yeah let's uh, get the car down from this and tidy up looks a bit messy here and fill up some fluids now for this car i'm using uh, for the engine mobile one super 3000 uh, fully synthetic 5w40 uh, this engine seems to be very happy with this oil and for the transmission oops <laughs> mobile uh mobile atf 3309 because this suzuki have a asin transmission that requires that oil or i think uh the suzuki main dealer oil or the, the oil you can get from the main dealers has uh, a similar type of name can i reach see if i can reach the dipstick <laughs> i'm too short oh dear oh dear oh come on oh, yeah uh, try not to make a mess there we are and as you can see here um here actually on the dipstick this is very clever uh it says oh focus focus hello come on focus How hard can it be? Just focus. Oh, nevertheless, it says Suzuki ATF 3317 or mobile ATF 3309, which is what I have put in this. All times I have changed the automatic transmission fluid. So yeah, then you know. Okay, so to fill up again the transmission, I have this funnel here that I put down the dipstick tube because that's the only place you can fill transmission fluid on these cars. So, we we'll do this nice and steadily. nice and easy you cannot be impatient doing this because then you will end up with a big mess i'm talking from experience so yeah i'll get back to you when i've done this because this is as interesting as watching paint drying so i'll get back to you now i'm done filling up the transmission uh, the level is now correct so now I'll move on to filling up the engine. Uh, this two liter Suzuki engine takes about four and a half liters of engine oil. If you haven't felt a backache before, try this. start up the car there and let the oil filter fill up and check it a bit later just gotten over a little bit over four liters in now so
it's always to have a little bit of paper around in case you spill some oil, which I almost always do. So, let's fire it up. Sounds like she's started to hang a little bit on the lifter, and she's home. But as long as as long as it's go, as long as it goes away, <laughs> that's how it sounds when a Norwegian tries to speak English relatively tidily. It doesn't always work well. <coughs> well, let's get a good stick. <clears throat> so let me just let that sit a bit. I have already checked the coolant level, topped up a little bit there, also on the power steering fluid. Just a little bit more. It just needed a little bit more. So it's now on the full mark on both of them. So all of the lights, that's a regular thing to check when you do a service on a car. I've changed, as you've seen already, the center bulb there and both, both of the license plate or number plate uh, uh, lights, bulbs, thingies. Yeah. <laughs> So let's just wait for this to sink down. So yeah. So it's been sitting a while. So let's check the fluid levels. And just a little bit more. I did just over four liters uh, when I started, so it's supposed to have four and a half, so I just put it a little bit less than it's supposed to have. Like a very nice pink color. Perfect. That's where we want to be. Uh, 
and like that the service is done i have of course checked the brakes there are enough brake pads uh, i did uh, clean and lube the uh, slide pins or what you call them uh, and where the brake pads are moving so everything's all right there i checked the handbrake i didn't the <coughs> oh hello i didn't need to tighten it this time because it hasn't done many miles since last year uh, headlamps looking good yeah so we can put this beauty cover back on again or what you want to call it that oops mm -mm -mm. oh i see i see i see <laughs> yet more professional recording oh hello come on are you still watching oh get in there please ah, there we are like that So let's go inside and check the mileage. Oh. Three hundred and fourteen thousand seven fifty eight. Yeah. Now I've just done a test polish on one of the headlights and that came up very good and very easily actually. Uh, didn't take much effort at all. Of course I'm using uh, an oscillating uh, polishing machine and some compound, not uh, the most aggressive one really. Uh, didn't need much effort at all. So, And I've put some wax on it, some Gion uh, wax, which is actually quite good uh, yeah so now i'll have a go on that headlamp quite a bit different don't you think yeah we'll get a new face this car <laughs> Now, in case you wonder, this is a Meguiar's microfiber DA uh, microfiber cutting disc. Just smear it a little bit around and start it up.
extraordinary how the city sees his headlights falling back. Oh, and then we wipe our bottles, wipe away some residue. That has made quite a bit of difference. Hasn't it? <laughs> now we'll lay a coat of wax on it. Just massage it thoroughly in. Like that. Let that sit for a few minutes before we buff it off. It's time to take the car down again. Okay, so now I've written down everything I've done in the service book with mileage, date, and everything I've done here. And so that's the service done. So if this can help you a little bit, maybe doing a service on a, a Suzuki Grand Vitara 2 liter petrol yourself, I hope it's at least a little bit helpful so yeah thank you for watching i see you in another video goodbye